There are no fewer than 483 smart lock options for your doors. And you can go ahead and look this up. I counted every single one of them. And these are largely deadbolt options, lots of Wi-Fi locks, and other cool features like facial recognition and palm readers, which will tell you your fortune. But there aren't a ton of integrated smart doorknob locks meant for just the latch itself, which I imagine you have far more of in your house than you do deadbolts. So today, we're about a year late to the party and we're gonna see just where in our house we can put the Thorbolt MK1. I'm calling this one the smart lock for every other door. I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. This is marketed as an interior door lock because it needs to be kept away from rain and moisture in general. So almost every other door because I actually can't put it on my deck door as much as I wanted to. Before I went around with a solution to a problem that didn't exist, like sticking this lock on our bedroom door, which is a door that's never closed, or any of the bathroom doors like Chipotle in a city and only giving the code to paying customers, I considered there actually was a perfect door to put this lock on, and it's both an interior and an exterior door in a sense. Our garage door, or at least the door that leads to our garage. What are we calling that? I had historically been calling the sensor on this door the interior garage door to differentiate it from the actual garage door, so I'm going with that. We were never very good about keeping this door locked because one of our cars uses phone as a key, so we didn't always have our keys with us. So putting the lock on this door was actually kind of a no-brainer, and I think that's the case for a lot of people so far. Another great use case for this lock would be for room rentals. So let's say you rent out individual rooms on something like Airbnb. This lock is great for individual access instead of providing physical keys. Similarly, this lock could be used to keep renters out of specific rooms. So let's have a look at the lock. Installation was like installing any other doorknob. It comes assembled, so you're gonna take it apart and pop it in the door. If we were to put this on a scale from one to read the directions, shit, we're at a one. This is another home kit over thread lock, which I'm happy to add as many thread devices to my house as I can, even if they aren't matter. Maybe I should have named the channel Make Smart Thread uh, or some variation, Make matter thread, which I find myself pleading for with every new matter device that's released. So what makes a home kit over thread device unique? Or at least what makes it different from a matter over thread device? Most of us are only used to seeing thread when it's paired with matter. So it might get confusing as to what was a matter thing and what was a thread thing. First, remember that matter is the application layer and thread is the network layer. So that multi-admin support where you can bring the device into multiple different ecosystems like Apple Home, Alexa, or Google Home, that's Matter doing the work. But if you've been building your smart home in Apple Home using largely Matter over thread devices and you add this lock, then it will join that same thread network. So if you have a pretty robust thread network, then this lock will be able to take advantage of that. And of course, this helps with connectivity and stability overall. If you didn't know, Thread requires a Thread border router. And in Apple Home, that's most commonly a HomePod, a HomePod mini, or the Apple TV 4K with ethernet. And some other hardwired Thread devices around the house are recommended for best performance, like plugs, switches, or some light bulbs. One more note about this not being a matter device. As I've been mentioning a lot lately, I've been adding all of my devices into the Homey Pro for automations. And Matter devices are easy. I just turn on pairing mode and I add the device into Homey Pro. I couldn't do that here because it's not a Matter device. It's a HomeKit device. And I couldn't even trick it into adding into Homey using the HomeKit controller app. So this lock is one of the only devices in my house that's just flat out incompatible with Homey Pro and no real solution. Which makes me curious, what's the compatibility like or even the process for a device like this in Home Assistant? But back to the lock. It's made out of zinc alloy, which I don't have a ton of experience with zinc alloy, but my first impression was that it's plastic. The handle feels plastic. My list of dislikes for this lock is very short. The only other one, and it's pretty glaring, it looks weird. And of course it does. It has to fit those four AA batteries and the fingerprint reader on top. I'm tucking those dislikes away in the middle of the video because I don't want it to be the last thing you hear me say. This lock is great. I'm extremely happy with it, which 
I kind of figured I would be having just installed the X1 on my parents' front door. The fingerprint feature is my absolute favorite feature on a door lock, and this lock is no exception. It feels extremely natural to just use my thumb on the reader and turn the doorknob to open the door. You have to use the Sleek Point app to set up your fingerprint, and you can store up to 100. The lock also has a keypad on the front, but I imagine you're only using this if you aren't a member of the household or a regular guest, or if you're Connor, whose little fingers are just too small to register on the fingerprint reader. Another feature the Sleek Point app has is auto lock, and it came turned on by default to five seconds. So we unlock with our fingerprint, and before the door can even close, it's locked again. We liked this setting because unlocking with our fingerprint doesn't feel like unlocking a lock. It's almost no different than just turning the doorknob. I want to zoom out a little bit on this lock and consider its role in the smart home and integration in general. It does something pretty interesting, and it might be a unique circumstance, but I think it's worth discussing. I have a very short playlist on smart home logic, and the point of the playlist is to think through the different ways that we interact with devices, whether on purpose or by accident and how that device reacts to our input. Of course, the goal being that the device always does what we want, when we want, and never what we don't want. And that's achieved through automations with conditions. With the Thorbolt MK1, it's so close to not needing any smart home integration, yet so far from being just an analog lock, that it really needs no user logic to be built in. I think you might use this lock as a trigger for other devices. You might turn on notifications for state changes and manage access for guests. The combination of features between auto lock, the thumbprint, and no deadbolt sticking out make this lock feel just like turning a knob and it's always accessible, even though it's essentially always locked. While we're here though, I'll point out that locked does not mean closed. So if this is an exterior door, we'll want to have a contact sensor on this door that won't allow our security system to arm if the door is open. But that's not a problem with this lock specifically, that can happen with most smart locks. This lock would essentially disappear among all the other doorknobs in your house if it weren't the most consistent and reliable lock in the house. And it looks weird. Looks weird, but wife approved. For all your doors that have a deadbolt, you've got a thousand options and counting. For your interior garage door, many of which don't have a deadbolt, you've got this Thorbolt MK1. And then all the doors leading into your house can be smart, except our deck door. Still dumb. This lock is pretty consistently about $80, and that's more than fair for just about any lock worth buying. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.